Hello everyone, today we are going to work out uh, one of very important uh, property and that is controllability property of the system. Uh, in particular, controllability uh, is very important uh, system theoretic property. So, controllability it's a system uh, theoretic property like stability that we saw the last uh, uh, class. And this property pretty much explains whether we can control the system. So, in other words, our ability to control the system is provided by checking whether we have a controllability property satisfied. Uh, what is the motivating example? Uh, let us look at uh, uh, system of uh, connected tanks, think about that uh, this is the huge plant somewhere in Saudi Arabia where uh, there are several of tanks which are interconnected and uh, these tanks uh, uh, lead to the port where the ships are waiting uh, essentially to uh, load the kerosene or oil or uh, any other commodity and to transfer uh, to the other destinations. So let's say that we have a U1, we have a U2 and that we have a tank like this and now we want, here is the port pretty much and we have a ship vessel here that is waiting for all of these to be loaded to be loaded in the huge uh, in the huge tank Okay, so in order to uh, allow the transfer essentially from this tank, let's say tank number one, T1, uh, all the way to the ship, we want to check whether we have a certain uh, controllability from a U2 input. In other words, if we achieve here certain height, we will have enough of the drop pressure to fill the tank. In other words, can we, from the U2 and all these interconnection, provide that this input can achieve certain state of the height in this tank? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And essentially provide the filling into the tank. Into the tank. So, in this way, we see that controllability is ability to control the system. And there are two main notions that we are going to consider. The first is, if we think is a controllability, if we put the state space a representation of the system, let's say that we have x1 and x2 and x3. And our state uh, initially is given here. And we are asking ourselves, can we control the system? In other words, can we transfer the system from initial condition to the origin in the finite time? If system is controllable, we can do that. So, so this is the notion of the controllability again. And therefore, we claim that controllability its ability to steer the system for some initial condition x0 to the origin, to its origin.
Complementary to this notion is the notion of reachability, which is now defined a little bit in a different manner. And if we look now again into this picture, x1, x2, x3, this is the state space of our system, we are claiming that reachability is the ability from the initial state that is in the origin to evolve the system to some desired state x of t in the finite time. So this is reachability, to reach. Okay. Reachability. And therefore, those notions are quite similar. Now, how do we determine or how we show the system is uncontrollable? So, if we have a basic system description x k plus 1 equal a x k. plus b u k and we are going to use this example to demonstrate how we determine the controllability condition in other words we are interested in the sequences that essentially move the system from x0 think about these are discrete events, discrete sequences because this is discrete system x1, x2, x3 and here we have a x t final okay, here is x0 so we can construct this evolution and no problem with that we decide that x0 is x0 initial condition x1 is a0 x0 plus b u 0 what is x2 x2 is a x one plus b u one but if we substitute x one here we will obtain that this is just nothing but a square x zero plus b a b and here we have a matrix u1 and u0 now for the x3 we will have in a similar manner a3 x0 plus now matrix b a b a square b and column vector u2 u1 u0 if this process goes on we find out that finally we obtain that x star or x at t is equal a n because we have a n discrete steps here 
to this evolution, we have n discrete steps. That x is 0 plus now goes b a b a square b a n minus 1 b and here is a vector of u and minus 1 u and minus 2 and here is u 1 and here is u 0 okay this is the n and n okay now what we have here is the following expression that this state, this x of t here, which is given on the left side of the equation, can be expressed and can be looked as follows that we say and we take this right side term and we say that x of star minus a n of x is 0 is now some new vector. Let's call this as a x new. Okay. And we see that essentially what we have that x star, this vector, because x at t is just a vector position in x1, x2, x3 world, minus a and x0 is just a subtraction of two vectors. So this x new vector is some other vector somewhere here. It's a new vector. Let's say it's a something like this. It's a x new. Okay? Because this is just this vector minus this vector. Okay? This has to be equal this entire matrix CRTB I'm going to call. C R T B multiplies U cop. Okay. In other words, we have that we have the following that C R T B matrix multiplies U. That is equal to x nu. Okay. So in order to find this u, we need to have that x nu lies in the range of the CRTB. In other words, we need invertibility of this. Look like that, invertibility. In other words, CTRB must have independent independent columns. Okay. Therefore, the rank of CRTB Of this method has to be the rank of the matrix A, the rank of the system. Therefore, we have and we see that here that if we want to obtain this U, this U is going to be CRTB. minus 1 multiply this x nu. We can even find what is this u sequence that will transfer us from the initial condition here to the final position.
Therefore, the condition for the controllability is that rank of matrix B A B A square B A N minus one B is equal to N where N is a uh, order of distance and therefore if we have this condition satisfied we know we can control the system okay in the similar way we are going to construct what is the observable condition and what is the associate observability there are also other ways to specify conditions of the controllability first is that rank of these CITB matrix is equal to n where n is an order of system or size of the a the second one is the rank of Ronsky n is equal to n and we are going to show in the lecture that also the rank of lambda i minus a rank to the large scale matrices of lambda i minus a b is also equal to this is also another way to specify the CTRB condition given here 